Okay, so we have been changing vertex to general. And generally, you just multiply it out. Okay, focus. All right. So the general form is this kind. And by the way, this teacher doesn't have the y equals here, and I'm going to put them in because if they're supposed to be an equation, they have to have a y equals or something on both sides of an equal sign. All right, so back to the vertex in this is not 2, 3. What is it? Negative 2, comma 3. Because the stuff on the inside, you do the opposite. It's counterintuitive. All right, this one tells me the y-intercept, which is handy. And this also has a, which is 1, and b, which is 4, and c in it. And a, b, and c tell you uh, good things. Those are the quadratic formula ones, a, b, c for the quadratic formula. All right, so basically this is handy for quadratic formula and finding y of intercept. This is handy for graphing because you know the vertex and so you know where to start. All right, if you were going to do number two, part A, your ZPP property says that this or this has to be zero to make this work. Making that zero is going to be easy. What is it? Negative three would make that zero. So the answer to it is not three, it's negative three. Because negative three is the thing you could stick in here to make the answer come out to be zero. Okay, but sometimes they aren't as easy to see. Like, this answer is not so easy to see. So what you should do, and I know some of you can do it in your head, but so what you should do is say 3x minus 2 equals 0, and then solve that. And then you'd add 2 to both sides. You have 3x equals 2, x equals 2 thirds. Why is that the solution again? Because if I stick it in here, it makes this part 0, which makes the whole answer 0, which makes the equation true. All right, so that's just a quick reminder. That's just a quick reminder about finding the roots or the zeros. And these, if you're looking at a picture, it's really easy to see them. It's just right there. Those are the roots. Those are also the zeros. Those are also the x-intercepts. And they're also the solutions. These have four names. All right? So this one would be negative 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4. Do you remember that you can write the equation for this then from that? You can say, oh, if this is a root of minus 1, then it's x plus 1 times x. And how do I make this 4 work for that? Minus 4. So that way the 4 solves it. And it equals 0. I want you to try another one like that right now. Please tell me the equation. If this is negative 2 and that's 7, tell me the equation for that parabola. Right now. Write it on your paper. And make sure you start with y equals or something equals. Two sets of parentheses. Did you have x plus 2 and x minus 7? What more did I need? Equals 0 because these are the x-intercepts, which is where y equals 0. Okay, so we say equals 0 and... One more thing. Does anybody remember a squared? Nope. That's we, the way. The reason this is going to be squared is because when you multiply this out, you'll get an x squared in it. That's a good question. A negative. Why should you have a negative somewhere? Because it's upside down. All right. See, this is upside down, so it needs a negative out front. Really easy to forget that. Okay. So if the parabola question were like this, and this is uh, 3 and this is 9. Write me an equation for that. Very simple, very easy. x minus 3, x minus 9. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Does it need a negative out front or not? No, because it's right side up. Okay. Now, one thing we haven't talked about too much is this line that runs right down the middle. That is, there's a line that runs right down the middle. It's called the axis of symmetry. Have you ever heard of that term before? It's the line over which it has symmetry. Focus. Thank you. The axis of symmetry that runs right down here. It would go exactly between 3 and 9. If that's hard for you to do in your head, then you can take 3 and 9 and average them. What's 9 and 3 make total? 
12, divide that by 2 is 6. And 6 is the number that's exactly between those two then. And now the axis of symmetry is not a 6. It's x equals 6. x equals 6 is a line that runs up and down. All right, yes? I, that happens to work this time. It won't always work. All right, so uh, especially because sometimes we have negative numbers, like you have one over here and one over there. That technique of averaging these two numbers will always work. All right, so let's do that one again. So let's say we had this, and this was at 1, and this was at negative 8. Uh, let's make it nicer. Let's make this 2 and negative 8. Okay, what would run right down the middle of them? Well, you average negative 8 and 2. When you add them together, you get 6. You divide, or sorry, negative 6. You divide by 2, you get negative 3. Does it look like negative 3 would run kind of right down the middle of this thing? That make sense? Okay. So, x equals negative 3. That's an axis of symmetry. That's one thing I needed to teach you. Now, here's the other thing I needed to teach you. This spot right here is called the vertex. I know you know that, but exactly where is it? Here's how you can tell. First of all, this equation would have been x plus 8 and x minus 2. Get how I got that out of these two? Okay, equals 0. And now, if I know that the vertex here is going to be on this line, and that line was x equals negative 3, then the vertex is something comma something, and it's negative 3 comma something. And if x is negative 3, all you got to do is plug it back into this equation. Stick in a negative 3 there and there. And why? Because really this is y. We just set y equal to 0 to solve that equation. But there's a y right there. And that'll tell me what the y is. So once I stuck in negative 3 here, and I stick in the negative 3 there, I get 5 and negative 5. What's 5 times negative 5? Negative 25. And that is the right answer. I know it doesn't look like it goes down to negative 25 the way I drew it. You're right, but it does. Let me prove it to you. Grab your, uh, grab your calculator. You're going to need your calculator anyway in a minute. And I want you to type in this equation here. x plus 8x minus 2 in parentheses like that. Calculator? If you don't have one, you can borrow one of mine. There you go. All right. On your y equals screen. I got it out. Now I actually use it. Type in x plus 8 in parentheses. In other parentheses, x minus 2. Hit graph. Now you want to find the lowest spot on it. You know what that's called? The lowest spot on the graph is called something with an M. The minimum, that's correct. And this calculator will tell us what point is the lowest on it. We get in here and type it in right clear. What I had from a different class. And I have x plus 8 and x minus 2. x plus 8. Oh, I suppose to have parentheses. But, uh, x plus 8 and parentheses. Next parentheses, x minus parentheses and I graph it and yeah it goes way down there doesn't it how do I find the lowest spot well first of all I'm going to zoom out I go zoom out that's number three and then I hit enter and it'll actually zoom out there now I can see the lowest spot now how do I find out where that spot is you need to become a ninja at this second calculate it's right above trace and that I just hit trace by accident. And this kind of gives you an idea. It gets you close. Okay, because I know it's somewhere around negative 23-ish. But if I want to be exact, what I do is second calculate. The minimum, it's number 3. Go to the left side of it. Hit enter. The right side of that minimum spot. And I hit enter. And I go right over the top of that minimum spot. And I hit enter one more time. And it says the minimum is that x is negative 3 and y is negative 25. Look at that. It's the same point we have 
right here. Good question. Why does the calculator say 2.999999? Do you get that that pretty much rounds to three? That when it's doing these calculations, it is not rounding for you. And so uh, it, it's reading its own graph. And its own graph can be off a, just a teeny tiny bit. So it's not actually calculating it with math. It's reading its graph. And that's less accurate. And so you just have to know that if these numbers are really, really close to a number, that it probably means that number. Like if it said 2.99999, you know it's 3. Yes? OK, so if you're going to do this from the start, then do it with me. Second, calculate. Minimum, it's number 3. You get that? OK, now do you see the little spider on your graph? OK, move it just to the left of the low spot. Hit Enter. Now arrow it just to the right. We need a right side of it. Hit Enter. Then go right on top of it and hit Enter one last time. And yours should say, oh, look at that. Mine actually hit it right on the nose this time. So it's kind of funny. Your calculator will sometimes give you slightly different answers. Did it work this time? Good. OK, if you got an error, you probably have the wrong calculator. Wrong uh, yeah, it does matter. You have to be on the left side first and then the right side. Okay, so enough of that. If you wanted, now we've proven it to you, if you want this vertex, first of all, just figure out the line of symmetry that runs right down the middle of it. That's easy. It's halfway between this and this. Then take that number, stick it in your equation. Once you stick that in the equation, it'll give you your y. This is a 0, but it's also a y, because y equals 0, because we're finding the x-intercepts. All right, so let's try one more like that. Let's say it's like this. This is at negative 2, and this is at 10. Now think for a second. What's the equation for it? Write it on your paper right now. These are like five-step problems. It's probably one of the closer things to pre-calc because pre-calc is lots of steps. First step, write the problem. x plus 2, x minus 10. Is that what you had? Okay. Next thing, you would figure out the axis of symmetry. That's the line that runs right down the middle. And yeah, you can just look at it and figure it out, but the smart way to do it is to average your two answers. The answers are negative 2 and 10. Be careful, and it's not positive 2 and negative 10. It's negative 2 and positive 10. And what's exactly between those two is the average of them. An average of them is, add them together, is 8 divided by 2 is 4. No, 8 divided, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So it should be x equals 4. Is that what you got too? Okay. So the line that runs right down the middle is x equals 4. So then the hard part is, what's the vertex of it? The vertex of it? is something comma something it's four comma something so i know x so i stick it in here and i figure out what y is and i have four plus two is six and four minus ten is negative six six times negative six makes negative 36. so this answer is negative 36. let's verify that by graphing it would you please on your calculator type that in to your y equals then do that minimum. And I want you to be able to find a minimum on a calculator. You'll be a little ahead. I don't, I'm not sure everybody knows how to do this yet uh, in other classes. x plus 2 and x minus 10. Borrow one away. All right, so I go y equals, and I go x plus 2 and x minus 10. If you want to go get that calculator from science in a minute, that'd be fine too. And, and parentheses, hit graph. There we go. Now, if you you can't see the low spot, you haven't zoomed out yet. All right. I want you to get yours ready because you're going to be showing it to somebody else. Show them the minimum that you've gotten on your calculator.
Let me see it. Good. 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 Don't want to use trace. Oh, okay, good. Close enough, enter. Yes, good. 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 It's good to see from the glare. Okay, and then do zoom out and then it'll work. Good. Good. Here's work or not? Oh, okay. Borrow one of mine. You're yellow up there. Yes. All right, and that round is close enough. It's almost negative 36. It's supposed to be. All right, good. Checking a few more people here. Good. 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 Thank you. Good. 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 Go here. Oh, good, good. Let me grab. Now you got to get out far. This will zoom out. Hit enter again one more time. There you go. Now you're zoomed out. Now you can get to the left of it. Oh, a second. Calculate. Can you show them how to do that? Yes. Mr. G, did you figure it out? I want to zoom out. Hit zoom out. Enter one more time. Otherwise, I won't actually zoom out. There you go. Now, go a second, calculate. You can walk them through, right? You're good. Okay, just making sure you actually know how to do this, because this will come in really handy next year, because uh, we do tons of graphing calculator stuff uh, in pre-calc, whether you're in the honors version or the regular version, either way. Okay. Is it possible to have only one solution? Well, yeah. Sometimes they have two solutions like this, but sometimes they only have one solution. How could that be? Do you just write one parenthesis and say x, well, this is at negative 4 in case you can't read it. So you say x plus 4 and only one parenthesis? No, because it wouldn't be a quadratic. Yep. Or another way to say that is x plus 4 and x plus 4. Get that? Because I know it seems like there's only one answer, but a bounce like this, you may remember this, maybe you didn't learn this last year, that's called a bounce. We're going to be learning more about that this year, actually. Um, this quadratic has two answers. If it has an x squared plus uh, uh, 8x plus 16, anything that has a squared in it, it's got to have two answers. It's just the same answer twice x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 4. All right, moving on. Don't expect you to totally grasp that yet. You're just learning. A, B, and C. This is in standard, excuse me, general form, and it can do the quadratic formula really well. What else can this give me? Y-intercept. This will be the y-intercept really easy because y-intercept is where x is 0. These two get canceled off. There's your y-intercept. The vertex form gives me the vertex, obviously. What's that good for? Graphing. You hit graph by hand, it's really handy. Okay, moving on. This is factored form. And that's what we've been doing with the two sets of parentheses. But what else do you notice in front here? That little number right there. And that's the stretch factor. That's how much it's been stretched up or down. We've been assuming that that's always been one. We haven't been stretching. But we will. What? Uh, if that number's negative, then yeah, the thing's upside down. All right, moving on. Did you find it? Good. So minimums and maximums. If I have it drawn this way, the top of it is called the what? Maximum. If it's like this, the bottom of it's called the minimum. These, both those spots are the vertex. It's just that the vertex could be a maximum or a minimum, depending on which way the parabola goes. And the last thing is these spots where it touches here are called the roots. They're also called the x-intercepts. They're also called two more things. Can you name them? The zeros. And the roots and the x-intercepts. And there's one other. Solutions. All right, so these are really important. Okay, moving on. 
If the scale factor, that's also known as the stretch factor, is 1, then these are simple. If the x-intercepts are negative 3 and 7, it looks kind of like this. Here's negative 3, here's 7, goes like that, and you know the equation for it, right? It's really easy. Write the equation for it. x, x, x plus 3, and x minus 7. You get that? Is that an equation yet? No. No, what do I need? Equals 0. Good. Okay. This one will be a little harder and stretch your big brain. Please write me this equation for B. It's really not that hard. I wanted to make a sketch of it. This is 2 and this is 5 and it's a parabola going through those two spots. But what I want is the equation. Oh, yeah, that's right. These always look like this. And so then I'd say x minus 2. The most common mistake is say x plus 2 and x plus 5. But it's actually x minus 2 and x minus 5. And then the second most common mistake is leave it this way. Because what's wrong? Scale factor 3 means a 3 out front. Okay? All right. Here is a typical homework question, but I don't want to actually do this question with you. I want to do the first question uh, out of the, off of the homework assignment. Um, and the homework assignment is a worksheet. And the worksheet's first question is this, x plus 2 and x plus 6. They give you this. And then they want a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Well, first of all, if this is the equation then what just jumps out at you is negative 2 and negative 6, and they are the what's? The roots. All right, so, or the x-intercepts, or the solutions, or all those things. So where would I graph this? Try to ignore the graph that's on the, on the graph right now. I would have it at 2, no, negative 2, and negative 6. Dang, that's not going to work on this graph. Sorry, I'll get rid of that graph then. Let me just go like this. I'll pull up one from my my own content. Here we go. And then go back to here. And now I'm going to say x plus 2 and x plus 6. And I'm going to say equal 0 this way just to make it fit. And then I'm going to graph it here. This is the first question off your worksheet. So I may as well just give you the worksheet and we'll do it together. So I'm going to pause for a second while I hand these out. Okay, we're on the first problem on the worksheet called factored form to general form. All right, and actually it says y equals, but I changed, or for f of x, I changed that to zero because why? Because we want the x-intercepts. And that's the kind of the usual way we see these. Now I know it kind of goes like this, but don't draw it in yet because you don't know exactly where it goes. All right, how about this? Do you know where the axis of symmetry line is? I hope you do. It just runs right down between these two. And now that you have it on a picture, it won't, it's pretty easy to see. Otherwise, you could have averaged negative 2 and negative 6 and gotten negative 4. So this line right here is at x equals negative 4. Runs right down the middle of it. All right, you need to put that in there. Next, how low do you go to find that vertex? That's probably the hardest part. So let's do these steps that they ask for in order. The first thing they want is gen form. Generally, you just multiply it out. So I have x squared plus 8x plus 12. And that's usually you say y equals, or you could say equals 0. Okay, there's your general form. The y-intercept on that. The y-intercept is where x is 0, and so you cancel off these two, and you'd have the y is 12. Now, a y-intercept is not a y equals thing. That's a, that would be a line. So don't say y equals 12. Say something comma something. The y-intercept is where x is 0, comma, what's the y? 12. There. Now, the next two are the x-intercepts. But if you just write two numbers, yes, I am aware that they're negative 2 and negative 6, you will get them marked wrong. Because x-intercepts are spots on a graph. They are points. The x-intercepts are something, comma, somethings. All right, so yeah, negative 2 is part of it. Are those the x's or are those the y's? Those are the x's. 
the x is negative 2 and the y is 0. And the other point is x is negative 4, y is 0. Okay, so those are my x-intercepts. Notice I wrote them as points. Oh, did I screw that up? Yes, I did. It's going to be negative 6, not negative 4. Sorry. Okay. Next thing is the axis of symmetry. That's a line. Remember, it's not just a number. I'm aware that it's negative 4, but don't write negative 4. Write x equals negative 4. That's a line as opposed to a point. They're different things. And the last thing we have there is vertex. The vertex. Well, the vertex is always a point, and it's a point where x is the same as the axis of symmetry. So I already know it has to be x is negative 4. And then to find the y of it, I take that negative 4 and I stick it into the equation right here. So then you'll have negative 4 plus 2 and negative 4 plus 6. 2 times negative 2, negative 4. I'd say that is the hardest thing for kids to remember of all of these, is how do you figure out that, the vertex. And it's just the x is just the same as whatever this line was. So you take that for the x of your vertex. And the y of your vertex, you stick this into the equation to figure out the y of it. Okay? Now, to make your worksheet just a little bit easier, I'm going to have you flip it over. We're going to skip one on the back side because we, uh, I feel like it's got more practice than we need. You may cross off the very first one there that says 5 comma, or x plus 5, x plus 5. Cross off that whole box there with all those questions. And the rest of it is your assignment due tomorrow. Now, I have a few people that i got to finish up some stuff with